Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some cards that have recently gone up in price or have stabilized. We will start with Snapcaster Maids in Modern Masters 2017. I think Modern's going well. My general feeling about Modern is they are promoting it more and we have a set. I mean, there's more copies of this. Modern Masters 2017 was very successful because there was so much of it. And you can still buy it at your local game store. You can still buy it online. People are not selling it for more than MSRP. And if they are selling it for more than MSRP, you can find it cheaper online. So Snapcast and Maids has stabilized. I expect prices to steadily increase, to continue to increase. And eventually he will reach where he probably $60 it's interesting because he can always be reprinted again. Now, Mana Vortex, which we made a video of previously when it was $2, is now $13. This is a reserve list card from the dark that is Land Destruction. Very good in EDH. And I had said that this is an interesting card and something to keep your eyes on. In particular, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it if you had bought in at the $2 mark or the 50 cent mark. You are now reaping the benefits of having probably one of the strongest cards from the dark. Now, you do have Maze of If, but Maze of If has slowly declined in price and it's also been reprinted. The Dark Mana Vortex, not going to be reprinted. Pretty good card in EDH. So talking about reserve list cards, Mind Over Matter, this has been steadily increasing. It is an EDH favorite. Uh, very simply, if you can, if you're going to choose and discard a card and you, what you're tapping allows you to draw mo more than one card, or hopefully more than one card, or even one card you can go infinite, but you would have to have a trigger ability to do something. Otherwise, you'd just be discarding and drawing, discarding and drawing, and maybe you have some delve or some ability like from the graveyard. But if you're drawing more than two cards from that creature, then it would be very simple, right? You discard a card, you untap the creature, letting you draw two cards. Now you tap the creature that says draw two cards, or it doesn't have to be a creature, it could be a creature, artifact, or even, I guess you could make a land that drew you two cards. You could go infinite quite easily. It's a very easy to understand principle in EDH. I'm pretty sure this is also on the reserve list. Next, we have definitely a card on the reserve list. And this card has been spiking like crazy. During, let's say, M14, it was probably $50 as a judge promo. It was considered one of the less valuable judge promos at the time. I know people really didn't like the artwork. I know people really didn't like the card, but it's unique. Why is it unique? Because it is a foil copy of something on a reserve list. Wheel of Fortune is a card that is very, very good. And with the new EDH's commanders, the drawing, the discarding, and I mean, that's good, right? Sometimes you want to draw for yourself. Sometimes you want to discard for you yourself and then vice versa for your opponents so you get trigger abilities and it's very good i expect this card to be insanely expensive even more than now due to edh it's everything that you want it to be for those decks now another card that i want to take some time to talk about is this one i remember in urza saga this was not considered a powerful card yes it did give you the additional mana but and it was very good looking, but when you compare it to Tolarian, uh, what what is it, Tolarian Tower or something like that, and then also Sarah's Sanctum, and of course Gaia's Cradle. Now the Shivian Gorge was by far the most horrendous of the bunch, right? But the Phyrexian Tower was second worst by a far margin. Then it would be Sarah's Sanctum, and then the Cradle would always be one. I think it's Tolarian academy is the card that i have in mind there's a lot of tolerance things going on now and this was one of the weaker lands but now it is more expensive it is a legendary land so you, 
it's amazing, right? It's amazing that you can look at these old cards and you can think, oh, wow. Even Damping Field, which is a uncommon from antiquity. So if you pull, if you have antiquities at all, you have a bulk. This is the definition of bulk, but it is now $10 almost. $10 almost, what does it do? Players may not untap more than one artifact during each of the other of their own untapped phases. A lot of strange things are happening on the older cards and people are telling me is this new format 93-94, which I still haven't seen played and I own some of the cards I could play with it. But for the most part, keep your old cards. Do not trade them away. Do not give them away. You need to keep your old cards because something like this, which was like 10 cents, someday becomes $10 overnight. And it's not just this card. It's not even just this set. It's everything. It's all the old cards. Uh, I hope this gets reprinted. It is A for Vile from Original Modern Masters. And obviously... If I were to guess what set Meriden, I'm trying to remember. Was April Vial Fifth Dawn? I can't remember where the original set was. Obviously, it is either the Fifth Dawn or the Meriden set because those are the artifact based sets. So, April Vial is now closing on $50. It's still a fantastic card. I want to play in Death and Taxes, but I only own two copies. I just couldn't bring myself to buy the other two copies because I'm always afraid that this card is going to get reprinted. And so I'm playing this kind of pseudo janky Death and Taxes deck in Modern. And it only has two Aether Vials, right? But obviously it needs four to be the optimal build. But it was nice. Aether Mind Sensor is very cheap right now. All right, let's talk about a fake spike. Um, this card... I had sent this card out to my patrons because I thought it was a junky card. It turned out it's in the unlimited. It's like 80 bucks at the time. It was like 80 or 60 or some insane amount of money at the time. And I was like, huh. Mother blanker. Right? Because I sent out a lot of these older cards to all the patrons and they received. Um, it was very strange. I'm not going to lie, it was very strange. Also, if my Patreon, my one single 10 Patreon's watching this, did I send you the stuff out for the month or did I not? Because hit me a message because I'll send you some cards, right? But I used to send these out. I think I sent all my Spirit Links out and Kismets, and they're like 10 bucks a piece now. I think Spirit Link is like 14 from Legends. And obviously, they were not that value, so you cannot be like, oh, well, in hindsight. Another card that is really pricey is the Lotus Petal, which is seven bucks right now. If you play during Temp, this is a common. If you play during Tempest, you would have batches of this. I just couldn't see that how you would not have this card because yes, everyone knew it was good, everyone played it, but after rotation, no one wanted it, and it just sat there. It's the type of card. It's the type of card that you don't even put in your trade binder because no one wants to trade for it. That's the type of card it was. It's like Lightning Bolt, right? Yeah, people really love Lightning Bolt. It's one of the most powerful cards. But if you go trying to trade for it, unless the person is really into trading, I would just I just wouldn't have any play sets of Lightning Bolt, even if it was in Standard. And it was in Standard one time, but it's just assumed that if you play Magic at all, you, you have your play set of Lightning Bolts already, and you don't really need to trade for them. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.